So, in keeping with the narrative, and um, by suggestion of a lot of people that I encounter, because I encounter a lot of people who decided that I would uh, do this little uh, ditty for historical record, I guess you could say, because of the fact that I um, have been told by a lot of people that I should write a book, and I've had websites and records of my th history destroyed online by trusting the wrong sites, trusting the wrong people, having my property stole by renegade moving companies, or one renegade moving company anyway. Uh, being attacked by a sibling and left in a blizzard, losing my home during the mortgage crisis, well actually before the mortgage crisis because I discovered the fraud in about 2001, 2002 that Citibank, Wells Fargo, all those guys were defrauding the American public of their home property, disenfranchising them out into the street. The government caught up like around 2009-2010. So I lost a lot of artwork, a lot of property was rifled through by Michael and Pam Garrett of Garrett Moving and Storage also known as Maryland Moving and Storage, also known as Maryland Moving, pretty much a criminal family who uh, stole my property after I stored my things with them during an emergency move because Citibank stole my home. And uh, was found guilty of doing it, yet we never got compensated for it. So a lot of this work is just relegated to photos because of the fact that I don't know where the work is anymore because the Garrett's either threw it out, destroyed it, kept it, sold it, stole it, who knows. But a lot of this uh, work that I'm going to be showing either no longer exists or somebody has it and doesn't know it belongs to me because a lot of it wasn't signed but I had over 300 pieces of work that I did myself along with work that I did for storefronts, signs, windows, the interior of stores, stage fronts, you name it. There's artwork of mine out there that I don't even remember because I suffered a near fatal head blow on the job while working for a uh, production company and was left to uh, fend for myself when my fiance walked off and left me homeless after living in a place where it took both our incomes to substantiate after moving her into, to my apartment then moving from that apartment into a larger one 
uh, uh, by Dreyfus Brothers called Key Towers in Virginia that just leaked like a sieve and water was flooding in to the carpet and there were big holes in the wall. We were like 25 stories up off the ground so then we moved into a town home in Germantown, Maryland and uh, that was the third move in about two years. Then I suffered a work-related accident and fell and hit the side of my skull near my temple while removing the equipment from a concert at a hotel where the bus waiters left water all over the floor. So if I sound a little bit off and lethargic, I'm living with permanent partial disability. So a lot of this is off the the top of my head and I don't really have a clear picture of what's going on. This is just done from scant remnants of memory. But this narrative juxtaposed the photos that I'm going to be showing in this video that I'm doing to chronicle my life as an artist and my life in history in general. I'm going to produce this to uh, honor the wishes of people who have heard my story and thought that others might be interested in it too. So. At one time, I had uh, left Catholic school and had gone there from kindergarten to eighth grade, being there's no middle school for Catholics, and then straight into high school, ninth and tenth grade at um, Archbishop John Carroll in Northeast Washington, D.C., where I was studying art, had been in theatrical arts, uh, starred in a play called Each in His Own Way by Luigi Pirandello at the uh, Wilson, Woodrow Wilson High School as part of the Wilson Players. And I had photos and all kinds of stuff for all of this. But as I said, ill fortune uh, costs me a lot of history in art, photography, and things like that, especially when I helped my vocal teacher move back to Miami and his wife thanked me by throwing me out on the street. That was my first uh, real long-term stint with homelessness, even though while growing up in Washington, D.C. and having a sibling that was older than me who used to just abuse me all the time, beat me up, chase me out of the house, throw me over in my bed while sleeping because I had not washed the dishes or something like that, gangs in the neighborhood, uh, drunks sleeping at the front door. I didn't come home anyway most of the time. I, I kind of grew up with no home. Spent about 42 years up and until now, if not more, memory doesn't serve me, but spent about 42 years living in the street, but always worked. I'd worked from five years old, finding recycle in the sewers and stuff, and chucking my books into some bushes and filling it up with the bottles and taking the bottles to the grocery store for deposit money. Um, I, I worked for most of my life and would come home late or not at all because of the fact that there was violence in the neighborhood, violence at home, and I just wanted to be an artist. I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to be around people who like socializing and having a good time. So 
Um, I spent most of my time and efforts in clubs, uh, restaurants, clothing stores. When I found Georgetown in Washington, D.C., when I left Catholic High School after 10th grade and went to public school in Georgetown, uh, the school was called Western. And it was an international school, and a lot of uh, international kids went there. But also a lot of hoodlum kids went there, so it was kind of a mix mash of atom smashing. But I discovered Georgetown and hadn't realized at the moment that I actually was born there. I was born on M Street, so I ended up... Uh, getting to know a lot of the real t retailers because Georgetown was also a, a very international area. There were a lot of uh, people that would frequent Georgetown and they would come and hang out and shop, eat. There were a lot of international stores down there, a lot of uh, very well-known restaurants and places to eat like um, the Bistro Francais and Nathan's and Martin's Tavern, um, Clyde's, uh, Pisces Club was down there, the Georgetown Club was there, where a lot of uh, the quote-unquote upper echelon went to uh, sequester themselves. Uh, I know that at various times presidents ate there. Um, there were places like Morton's Steakhouse, Blimpy's, uh, American Cafe, Mr. Henry's. There was no end of things to do. There were uh, international restaurants, Greek restaurants like Icarus, uh, uh, Middle Eastern restaurants like um, Fetouche, and uh, then there were like restaurants from India, the Maharaja Inn was there, which eventually became a chain known as Tandoor Restaurants. But they also had uh, Kathmandu, which was Nepalese and Kashmiri cuisine. And there were Iranian restaurants down there. Uh, Marché de Francais, uh, um, French grocery store, uh, places like um, Annie Oakley's, which was a sawdust peanut shell on the floor bar, which eventually opened up a place downstairs called Cafe Broadway. I helped design and do a lot of the interiors of a lot of this, these places. I also did a lot of storefront signs for a lot of these places and windows. And at one time, every two or three blocks, some of my work was either designating the uh, business itself, the restaurant, or hanging from the wall or I had assisted in framing some of their uh, larger-than-life posters for like Mistinget and other artists, uh, Nagels. Uh.
Ertes and, and different artists like that. And uh, doing their windows, I managed a store called Time and again Art Deco at one time and worked with uh, a lot of the uh, uh, art dealers and art collectors and uh, um, was shopping at places like Abercrombie Fitch and uh, uh, Britches and so I um, had quite the wardrobe so the art was reflected in the way I dressed. I was going to uh, a lot of the galleries that were down there and working with Sassoon Salons and Ilo and uh, uh, some of the more um, um, well-known places down on K Street like um, K Street Lounge and uh, J, J. Paul's and Paolo's and knew uh, Sam Levy and Jack Snyder who were property owners down there and I worked for Georgetown University driving buses for GUTS which was an acronym for Georgetown University Transportation Society. Um, interacted a lot with Sotheby's Park Barnett which eventually I think became just Sotheby's and uh, I don't know, I guess you could say became quite the personality because of the fact that I knew people on every block, restaurant tours, restaurant owners, shop owners, um, help do sales signs in different shops, uh, Moda, Alta Moda, uh, La Vin, and a lot of the other stores, uh, they actually had a store called Stefan, which was owned by Jean-Paul, the uh, part owner of uh, Bistro Francais, uh, David Berkebile, Georgetown Tobacco, had my signage on his door. and window and uh, at any given time I was out in the nightlife uh, going to different uh, uh, clubs like Tramps and Scandals and, and the Saloon and um, Cellar Door Productions was down there, One Step Down, Blues Alley, uh, Crazy Horse. I mean, Georgetown was just like a mecca for artists, artisans, uh, hair designers, restaurateurs, and retailers. And I was... Uh, working there till actually Georgetown Park, the indoor mall opened up and Eduardo's was in there and a lot of other places. So it was little known to any high profile advertisement that I was a very well-known artist down there and that a lot of people had my hand doing their work because of the fact that a lot of the work that I got done was by word of mouth and I wish I had photographs of a lot of the uh, places down there that I did work for but I do have a remnant of the work and so I'm doing this video so that I can show, showcase some of that work that eventually made its way to California where I ended up working for Steve Wozniak back in 1982 
at US Festival helping him set up and build a three day, three night concert that he threw when he got his first $80 million check for Apple computers. And I, my hand was on the uh, graphics for Peace Sunday, which was a uh, concert for nuclear disarmament in Pasadena, California. After I hitchhiked across the street from, uh, I mean, across the uh, United States from um, Miami Beach, Florida into uh, Skid Row, LA. and lived on the streets of LA in the actor's mecca trying to I guess participate in the storytelling of TV, movie, and film. Until I found out what that was like and sort of got exhaled from California. Lucky me because of the fact that the place turned out to be quite seedy and not really my cup of tea. But uh, while I was there, I worked for uh, Waz who took good care of us. And I've got videos on that. Uh, Peace Sunday, I got to work with a lot of people Jackson Brown, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, and, and uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young had reunited and were doing a show there. Gil Scott Heron, who I knew from working in D.C. with a band called Brute back in the day, so Gil used to come and we played basketball out at Maryland University. and. So we were acquaintances, and I actually was in a movie uh, uh, called Talk To Me, where I was uh, portrayed in three different time zones, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I believe. And... Uh, they dressed us accordingly and got to work in a, sort of like a uh, docudrama where uh, the story was about P.D. Green, who I actually was acquaintances with also because I used to visit the radio station where King Bee and Nighthawk and P.D. all broadcast from, which was right over the hill from where I lived, called WOOK and W-O-L, and uh, King B used to give me rides to work when I worked at a uh, an amusement park in Tacoma Park, Maryland called Kitty Land, which was a miniature scale amusement park for children, and I actually did superheroes and repainted the uh, merry-go-round there. And I used to run into King B when I was either hitchhiking or walking to work from DC. And it was quite a walk, quite a bicycle ride and hitchhike. So my artwork was all over the place. I mean, like I said, this is all off the top of my head and I can't 
remember everything, but I guess I remember a lot because I had work on K Street, M Street, Georgetown Park, Bethesda, Maryland, or actually it was not Bethesda at that time, but ended my work ended up in Bethesda, Maryland uh, um, in the uh, late 80s, I guess. And uh, but that was Tacoma Park, Maryland. Kitty Lamb was in Tacoma Park, Maryland. I had photographs of this stuff, and I also had uh, collections of drawings and, and paintings that I had done, and uh, uh, ended up doing a book cover for an author, uh, Prince Orishak Bemi Babatunde. from Nigeria and the book was called In Front of Lincoln. So I did the, he, he commissioned me to do the book cover for him and I was a member of Art Directors Club of Metropolitan Washington. I used to do their annual uh, judge contest judgment for uh, all the graphic artists in the continental United States and then set up the displays in a government building down in D.C. some place with my uh, fiance, Sharon Rogers, who passed away in 1995, I believe, if memory serves me. And uh, uh, um, so I had my hands in a lot of things. My art was in a lot of things. Uh, Salon Jean-Paul in Spring Valley. and uh, other venues, but to not make this long and arduous and to just give a brief history of my life as an artist, even to this day. I mean, I was doing clothing design and, and, and uh, fashion shows when I went to school at Georgetown, uh, George Washington and Howard. I was uh, stage and set designer, I was doing follow spots, I was actually doing choreography for fashion shows and working with the Black Caucus and different entertainers in that field. So I spent my life as an artist and I've got a lot of uh, stories and, and history. Don't have a large bank account, I've got like maybe in two-figure bank account, but uh, that's because I spent most of the time volunteering, uh, helping the parties go on, making the parties go, uh, designed Church Street Studio that was at 14th and Church Street with uh, Ricky Clay, who was the original creator of that and brought me along to do the uh, graphics and art inside the studio and uh, uh, we were upstairs in this huge warehouse type place and uh, then this theater moved downstairs from us and named themselves the Studio Theater and I don't know where they got that from but we were Church Street Studio and we had a lot of people coming to uh, our club and the parties that we threw that we started in a townhouse on 15th Street. So then that blossomed into designing a medical center in Baltimore and I was the art director for that and did a huge mural of the skyline of Baltimore on the wall. I have photographs of that. I mean, I have photographs of work. My work was all over the place. and sort of like uh, trickled off. I don't, haven't done that much work lately, but if memory serves me, I did album covers and uh, did the front of bass drums for different bands and stuff like that. I mean, anything I could get my hand into, 
I did. So this is a short expose, if not a long expose, on that. And I'd like to recover and do a part two if I can. I just have to eventually get situated. I'm sort of transient right now because, as I said, I suffered a near fatal head blow. Then went into a, the hospital for an inguinal hernia operation. I've got a video on that. So I'm recovering from a lot of injuries and I was a victim of the opioid crisis so I had to get off of that because opioids were killing people and I didn't wait for it to get that bad but I'm doing a lot of AI generated art now and I'm just trying to recover. My things have been in storage since about off and on since about 2003 when the mortgage crisis happened and those five banks started defrauding everybody, namely Citibank and Bank of America. and uh, Wells Fraud Company. But I, I have a lot of stuff still in storage that if I could just go through, I can do a part two and have examples of early work that I've done. But for now, I guess this should suffice just to show or showcase some of my work.